Um, all right, we are we're live on Twitch now, so that's happening. And then I gotta bring up the rundown. That's there, and then I gotta hit that button. I think we're good otherwise. Our headlines today. Not many headlines, which makes not a sense. lot. I, I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of games to talk about though. Right, we'll talk about the games a lot. So, okay, let's do this thing. Uh, hit start record. Okay, five, four. Three. It's the internet. You're busy. Let's do this. Welcome to the Games Beat Decides podcast. This is the podcast where we decide everything about the world of games so you don't have to think for yourself. I'm your host, Jeffrey Grubb. With me is Mike Minotti, enemy to Half Life Alex and yes. all things related. Half Life Alex, enemy number one. Yes. Here he is, everybody. Apparently. Get him. It's so it's Get so him. bizarre it's so bizarre when like you like a game and that still is like that becomes like your you Didn't like it enough, Mike, and you know uh, what you did. You yeah. know. Yeah. I guess we'll get to that later. But, we'll get, we'll oh, get to it. Yes, we what will. Week. We will get to it. Um, in today's episode, we'll have some news. Then we'll talk about some games. One of those is Half-Life Alex. We'll talk probably a little bit more about Animal Crossing, New Horizons. Plenty of this we'll talk about there. Uh, first, though, I want to thank everybody for joining us. You can get more from me and Mike at GamesBeat.com. Uh, if you have something to share with us, email the podcast at games plus podcast at VentureBeat.com. That's the plus sign in there. If you are listening to this on the website Player Widget or if you're watching on Twitch, you can subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, and more. I think it's Google Podcasts now. I haven't updated this in months. Um, yeah, whatever it is. Well, yeah, whatever. It is. People figure it out. Uh, if you like the show, rate us on your you know listening app of choice. It helps people find the show. And then tell a friend about it. That also helps. Uh, finally, thank you to Carlos Ayin, who is insane in the rain music on YouTube, for the use of this theme song. All right. Um, yeah, let's let's hop right into the news, Mike. Uh, uh, the first thing I have written down here, the, 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 like you said, there's not a lot of headlines uh, this week. But um, so I'm, I'm not going to go any like logical order. So the first thing I wrote down here is GameStop is essential. Um, <laughs> we haven't really right. talked about that story too much. So I, and it all sort of played out in this last week, which felt like a month, but I guess it was just. A <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, this story was moving so fast you couldn't even write about it. Yeah, so I know. Like, yeah, uh, I was like, and I was like, gonna write something about like GameStop in general, anyhow. And I was like, wait, wait, stop, wait, what, wait. So basically, for people who don't know, I think most people probably do by now. Uh, GameStop uh, was trying to not close its stores, even though many states and, and counties are requiring all non-essential stores to close. GameStop uh, said, no, we are essential, and. That's an absurd statement in an, in and of itself, but their reasoning was like, we sell webcams now, and people need those to work at home. That's like, hell, homie, that's just not going to cut that's the stretch. mustard. That's wow. Yeah, it's just not going to do it. Um, and, it, and it hasn't done it, and there, were, there was a huge backlash. And, I mean, the obvious thing that's happening here, right, is that GameStop is just hurting, and they don't want to lose any money. Right, yeah, I think I think GameStop just thinks that we cannot afford to have our awful situation get any worse yeah. So we have to do whatever we can. Like, I'm sure, you know, I don't think they really thought they were going to fool anyone, but like, well, we got to give it the old college try. Right. And they, it, it, even worse than not fooling anyone, they just made everyone mad at them. Yeah. Uh, and they have begun walking this back. And they, they've taken some steps that are actually pretty decent. Uh, it would have helped if they had done this up front. And it's like you could tell, like, they're just doing this now because it's like damage control. But the damage control isn't the worst thing in the world. They, um, they're um they closing all their stores for any sort of, like, in-store browsing. You can order online, and then you can pick stuff up by going to the door. And then the person who's working in the store will package it all up, making sure the store is clean, and then, and then give you your order. So that's something. But then also they're, like, going to give paid time out, like, uh, for any employee that needs it. Uh, and, and like they have, they have employees who earn pay, t pay time off, um, at PTO, but the, uh, not every employee does the employees they do are going to get extra time, like a month, like, um, like a, the, the equivalent of like what they accumulate over a month or something like that. And the people who aren't PTO are going to get two weeks of paid time off if they need it. So people who are sick won't have to come to this, come into the store. And it's like, man, if they had just started here, none of right. this would, this would not have been a story, but now when this all blows over, when when we do get back to a normal sort of life, which we will, like the stuff, everything will pass, we will. So at, at that point, people are going to remember, like, oh, GameStop was real shitty during coronavirus. Remember that? And 
<clears throat> there's nothing they could do about that now. It feels like. You think Reggie's having fun on that board? And he hasn't even like joined it yet. He doesn't even like <laughs> officially like join it until April fifteenth, I think. Oh wow. Yeah, so it's like he's gonna show up and be like, "Oh, cool fire you got going here, bro." Okay, uh, sweet. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, it, it was a big mess, and like I, you can't care about money more than people right now. I know, like we're right. we're having that conversation as a society. <laughs> yeah, yeah, surprisingly, some <laughs> people are like, "Well, yeah, maybe. it's like." Logan's run was trending yesterday just because that's what we're doing. Like, that's our strategy is Logan's run. Um, and, yeah. And so, but as a corporation, as a, like, if you run a store in a community, you're part of that community. And anything you do that seems like a, uh, like you're putting your profits before the safety of that community, people are not going to take well to it. It's just, like, lesson learned, I think, for everyone else. For GameStop, probably too late. Mm -hmm. Um Let's, uh, let's move on here to this next story. Animal Crossing New Horizons smashes sales records in the UK. It is the fastest selling single Switch game ever. So we get sales data out of the UK pretty quickly. Um, right. And it, it, like, by, like on a week by week basis. So that, like on Monday that came out. And I think that's just for like, I think it was just for like weekend sales. Um, it's, yeah, it's a bit, it seems like it's selling really well. And this is some, this is sort of confirming that at least in one market. But just looking around, it, it feels like it's selling well, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, the the timing is part of it, but even before that, people just seem to have, like, this extra hunger for this particular mm -hmm. Animal Crossing. Uh, it's just, it's all kind of nuts, isn't it? Like, this this is going to probably be one of the best-selling games on the Switch. And I know that was true for Animal Crossing on, like, the 3DS and maybe the DS, but right. it, exponentially more so than that, even, I think. Right. Yeah, I think I think it's yeah, it's the series is clearly growing. It's catching on. It's like in the it's in like the public conversation more than ever before. I think a big part of that is just like Twitter is even more pervasive than it was like it's it's especially more pervasive than it was in 2013 when New Leaf came out. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you just see like people who are like are politics writers and reporters who are like covering Trump and, and coronavirus nonstop are like also tweeting about Animal Crossing now. Chrissy Teigen is like a well-known fan, but there's like a lot of other celebrities that are also tweeting about it. It just seems like it's catching on with everyone. And I mean, like you said, of course, a big part of it is just now is the a good time for a game where you are where there's like almost no stress or no stress that you don't choose and put on yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And you can ignore it whenever you want. And it's just there's no like really like lose condition. Although if you get bit by a tarantula, you like you die and respawn. So I guess there's that. But you just respawn immediately. And I mean, yeah, well, all yeah. that happens is you get teleported to your house, basically, right? Yeah, like you don't exactly lose anything. right. And it's like yeah. So it's just like this low low key chill game, and it's really working out well for Nintendo. I, I'm, and I'm still really liking it. So well, we'll talk about that and what we've been playing. Um, mm -hmm. Here's another uh, Nintendo thing uh, by way of Sony. Uh, Nintendo is going after creations and dreams related to their franchises. They've asked... Uh, so, Dreams is a game where you can make stuff. You know, the players are making all the stuff in Dreams. And a lot of the stuff is going to be derivative of things in pop culture because that's just how, that's what we do. It's the first thing we always make in stuff. And, and, right, right. That, and one of the first things they're making in this game, uh, a lot of people, is Mario stuff. And Zelda or whatever. Wario, Donkey Kong. Uh, and you'll see these things online. Um, and Nintendo has asked, asked Sony to remove a lot of these things, but I think they're also now sending, like, cease and desist to the creators. I, I may be wrong on that point, but, but you know, we, we could talk about it, like, in an overall sort of way. Um, I mean, how do you feel about this, Mike? I, I feel like I'm conflicted a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean, Dream says don't use other people as creative yeah. property, right? Yeah. Uh, and, I, and to be fair, like, Nintendo is typically, I guess, good is the word about not letting people, like, kind of copy other IP on their game creation things, like like Mario Maker, is that correct? Like, they're usually pretty quick to ban things that are trying to be, like, a Sonic level or something, or am I making that up? I, I think they do. I mean, they definitely will if, if the IP holder asks, but I, I think they tend to go after that stuff. And, and right. just the way they make those those things, they make it more difficult to put that sort of thing in there, where Dreams is, right. like, it's very easy just to make a game that looks like a Mario game. Right, and I mean, you know, they do have a game. The whole point of it is to make your own Mario game, so you can see why maybe they're not thrilled about right people, yeah, you know, doing this kind of a thing. So yeah, it's I, I'm I'm with you, and like I'm kind of conflicted about it, but I, I it's like I get it. Yeah, it's I mean, 
for better or for worse, the system is set up so that the thing that has value is the property itself. Like, Mario ha has value as a property where Nintendo can go out and license it and make games based on that character. And because it's the only one, on the only company that can do that, it makes the things that it, 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 it gives extreme value to anything it does with that character. Mm -hmm. And anything that might dilute that, you could see that's like, that could be like, you know, it slightly dilutes the value of the character. Uh, and that's just the system that we have, like that there's no getting around that. It's like, you know, uh, eventually these things go into the public domain, but that's, you know, you know, 100 years from now or whatever. And, you know, and we see that that works, that system does work. Like Sherlock, Hol Sherlock Holmes has plenty of great examples of like different people taking that idea and actually like building something on it. Um, but like a lot of these things that people are making are they're just making them for fun inside the game and they can share them with other players. And, yes, Sony, I guess, is getting some financial gain from, like, people wanting to play the Mario thing in Dreams, but I, I doubt it's it's probably not a lot. Right. That's a, do I actually believe it's harming Nintendo in any way? Yeah. Not really. Yeah. And it's like, and what we're talking about here really is, like, when you get down to it, is kids doodling in a game and yeah. doing the things that they like and, you know, drawing the thing that they like, just like they would in their, their like, notebook at school. And... It's because it's on. A, I think it's because it's on a competing platform. Because it is a game, and Nintendo's feel, feeling threatened. I, I feel like Nintendo maybe should maybe take a lighter touch here and sort of lay off and just say, "Hey, Sony, can you just like if something gets really big, maybe take it down? But otherwise, don't don't bother like the small people who are just like using Nintendo characters." Um, I, I feel like there's another way around it, but Nintendo's always going to sort of take a, a blunt force object to this problem. Mm -hmm. So, oh well. Um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 campaign remastered has been rated. Uh, this seems like it's yeah. going to happen. Uh, this seems sure. pretty obvious, right? Yeah, I mean, when they did that last time, it helped out the, uh, whatever one that was with. Yeah, Black Ops, Black Ops 4, was it? No, it must have been an Infinity yeah, something War. like that. That sounds yeah. almost right. Yeah, it, was, it had to be an Infinity Ward game. But yeah, that, but that, like, the last one, when they, when they did a remastered uh, a version of Modern Warfare, they packed it in with a game. And then you mm -hmm. had to wait months before you could buy it separately. It sounds like this one's just going to launch separately, which I think, uh -huh. you know, that makes sense. So the games are selling just fine without having these bonuses in them. So, um, although, do you feel like we're getting a lot of Call of Duty right now? Just like, just uh, gotta... yeah, I mean, I feel like maybe that's intentional, right? They want, because especially with like map packs and stuff like that not being a thing anymore. That's true. Or they maybe want Call of Duty to be part of the conversation year round. So you do things like release your Battle Royale months later, then you re release a remaster of a much older game even later than that. Like, I, you know, kind of makes sense. I get it. That's a good point. I, d I didn't think about it that way. Um, I'm a genius, Jeff. Yeah, I, I mean, that's what I was trying to say, Mike. That's, I'm mm -hmm. glad you could just put it into words for me. I appreciate it. Uh, NVIDIA's DLSS 2.0 uh, launches. That's a real quick. It's not It's not a Mikey story, all right? You no. Can just, you could take a nap, all right? It doesn't sound like it, it's not. Okay. It, it, I'll permit it. It's, uh, so DLSS is deep learning super sampling. Uh, basically, it's a trick where uh, NVIDIA teaches a computer to look at a game, and then they look at, it looks at a game running at, like, like not 4K, but like 16K, and it looks at it for hours and hours, and it figures out it figures out what a game is supposed to look like in its most ideal environment and its most like I ideal rendition. It can then use that data and send that information out to the drivers on a GPU, and then when you are running a game uh, at 1080p and you turn on DLSS, it can actually run the game at more like 720p, and then it upscales using this this uh, external knowledge about what the game should look like to then reproduce the image uh, 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 as a 1080p image it's still act but it's rendering really at 720p so what this does is it gets you it gets you a ton of extra performance and even better than that in a lot of cases that that deep that deep learning super sampling actually gets uh, uh it ends up producing a better image than like a native 1080p because it has more information to work with than a 1080p rendering actually can, can produce. So it's a, it's a really impressive technology. They've always they've had it for a while since they launched the RTX cards. With 2.0 now, uh, they are planning to put in a lot more games because the machines they use to actually teach the stuff, they've built like a, a universal model. Previously, they had to build a model for each and every game. Now they have one that works with anything. So they should just be able to start throwing games in there and seeing the results. Um, and also, it's, it's like just overall faster. So like it was it was... It runs on the Tensor cores inside RTX GPUs, and it's twice as fast on those Tensor cores than it was before. So 
you know, what this gets down to is you should get games that are running better than ever, look sharp, like still look really sharp. Uh, it look like they look equivalent to like 4K, uh, and but they're not really running at 4K, so you get really high frame rate still. And a lot of times, what you could do is is with this extra uh, horsepower that you like this leftover overhead that you have, you can apply that to something like really intensive like ray tracing. So you can get games that still run well even when, when even when they have like the most highest and most demanding version of ray tracing running. So it's a it's a really cool technology. It feels like something that like was still years off. And NVIDIA has been impl- like incrementally making it better. And it should, like, be a big deal uh, uh, c- come, like, I think this fall, like, a ton of games are going to be running DLSS. And it's going to make maybe kind of a, a big gap between what NVIDIA can do and what other hardware can do. So uh, exciting stuff. Uh, we'll see. I think AMD is going to have to come out with something like this. And I think if, if, if Microsoft and Sony, especially Microsoft, has huge cloud infrastructure, could run these neural networks required to, like, train games they should be doing this stuff with consoles because it can really make a difference uh, in, in the performance on, like, a, you know, Xbox Series X. All right, that does it for the news, Mike. Did anything else happen this past week? I can't really remember. Oh, uh, gosh, I mean, video game news-wise, not that I can remember. Yeah, it's, it's mostly just world-burning news. Mostly yeah. worried people talking about the big releases. Yeah, yeah, uh, and we'll kind of we'll get into that right now. So, uh, I mean, look, you did it, Mike. <laughs> you, you you ruined Gabe Newell's day. I uh, ruined every. It was supposed I ruined to be his it for day. everyone. You ruined everyone's day. Why would you do that? <laughs> oh God. Why yeah, so no, low? No. <laughs> Why so low with the eighty? Uh, reviewing games is so weird. Yeah, you know, a... I, when I when it came out, I didn't know that was going to be the lowest score. I would have been surprised to be honest. I was a little so you know I don't know what the hell people are going to think. I know. I I mean. I, yeah, it's it's always weird to be like playing and reviewing and thinking about a game in complete isolation, where no one right. else knows what to think about it. Like the people that that are playing it, you can't really go have a conversation with them because that might influence your your score and like your object, uh, you know, the right, real yeah, objectivity you you're to. actually worried about there, which is like the truth of your experience. Um, you wrote about the truth of your experience, Mike. People don't seem to appreciate it too much. Uh, why don't you just why don't you tell us tell us about like playing Half Life, Alex? Like what was the, Start from the beginning, actually, because you were originally supposed to go up to Seattle, right, to to play this. No, no, not that I. Oh, no, no. you you weren't going to do that because I know because I know like Valve was having a thing. Uh, were they okay? I guess not. So I guess I wasn't invited to that. I guess not. I saw that email, and then, and then all of a sudden it changed because coronavirus started getting everybody. So okay, so, <laughs> so then they sent it to you instead at your place. And Maybe what was the right, setup like? My setup, I kind of cleared out my office. They actually sent the Valve Index also because I did not have a PC VR thing. So. I spent a couple of days figuring out how to set up a Valve Index, which, to be Not clear, when I say it took me a couple of days is because, like, I was, like, fretting about how to properly get these cameras up into the walls. Until yeah, I what did, did you like, end up stop. doing with the lighthouses? Did you uh, command tape, or, or did you actually take the At first, I had a really weird system where I was using some, like, the, like, sticky hangers from Christmas, and that was kind of haphazard, so then I got some, like, painter tape, like that blue stuff, and that did the trick pretty well. Okay. So, yeah, I still have these things kind of hanging on the walls, taped heavily and whatnot. So, and my, my play space, like, just barely meets the minimum requirement for the room scaling. Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, so, like, I can room scale, but sometimes, like, I'm seeing those grids quite a bit, you know what I mean? So, I, got, still, a, I got a pretty big space behind me, uh, I, 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 but it's, like, it's misshapen, so I don't get, like, the perfect rectangle, uh, but I feel like... If I move around too much, I, you know, I probably should, should just mess around with my settings. I feel like no matter what I do, if I move even just a little bit, I'm seeing those that, that grid too. So I think okay. I should go in there and like turn down the aggress the the aggression right. on like how much it wants to warn me about that stuff. But I mean, you know, I have a good PC and I have Valve Index, so it was probably about as optimal an experience you can have with the game uh, that I can imagine. It, just so people know, like I like Half Life Lost, especially like, Half Life Two is one of my favorite games of all time. And to be clear, I gave this game an eighty. Yeah. And, uh, so it's like, I, and I don't hate this game, uh, you know, kind of like what some people are throwing out there. I, I just think... was, part of it was just, you know, and this was kind of what I led with the review and this is what is, uh, infuriating so many people, I guess, was this notion I kind of had that this was, man, this is kind of a rough game to play at this particular time because I'm sort of stressed out. 
uh, about, you know, being isolated and living in this, this kind of, like, weird, empty, quiet world. And that's, you know, what goes on in Half-Life. That's a lot of the game. It's, it's still very similar to that. And this game's actually leaning much more into being a kind of, uh, you know, I guess you say a survival horror experience. You have things like an ammo scarcity. It's much more intense. Your, your health is pretty limited. The monsters hit a lot harder. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. That's like all, you know, pretty interesting and valid design choices. But again, it's just, it's, it's all makes for a much more stressful game than you might usually be used to with, with Half-Life. And like, I, I mean, you're not someone who like loves survival horror in the first place, right? Like, or at least not a, not a, I can, I mean, you know, I, I can, I, I hate horror movies, okay. but video games, I can do it. You know, I, 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 I can enjoy that sometimes. Again, this particular moment, the, the kind of stress of it with the normal stresses of life. And then, you know, it's, it's in VR and I, I I'm like somebody who has like, I, who's maybe medium with handling VR sickness. Like mm-hmm. it gets to me after a while, especially when you're playing a long game like this, that's like 10 hours long. So like, you're trying to like get good sessions in, right? Like I'm trying to play for an hour or two each time I'm, I'm playing the thing, not even just because of like, you know, timeline necessarily, but just because like, f- like feel like playing like a big story based game like this and, Burst smaller than that is kind of like weird and disorienting in its own way. I guess yeah. I don't know if that makes any sense. No, it does. Right. So you know, there's there's that thing going for it. Uh, then you know, the game itself, I I think is it's definitely the most like full featured VR game in terms of like a single player AAA game experience. Right. Yes. It's 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 doing that, and that alone is an achievement. Aside from that, like. A lot of it is kind of VR tricks and stuff that we've seen before sure. that are cool, that they work, you know, like, oh, look, I'm actually reloading the gun. That's neat. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't solve the locomotion problem, right? Mm-hmm. So by default, you have the, the this quick teleporting thing. Where which, it, like, sucks you from one place to the other, and you can, like... Yeah, yeah. and you're, like, you're telling it where to go. Like, you have, you have pretty good freedom about where you're going. Sure. So it gets you to the places, but, I mean, it's not super immersive to just suddenly zoom around places like that and then you can't there are options where it is sort of more like smooth free roaming but like i could do that for five seconds before yeah and and, you know and some people have better um better luck with that but it's you know it's it's not it's a game still made like a first person shooter where you are exploring spaces it's not like oh a series of small room scale spaces that you get to walk around and, and and then like they've they didn't like design it around just being room scale it's like you are still gonna be pushing yourself forward Right, and the level design is very much like it was in, like, Half-Life 2, where it's linear, but, like, sections can be kind of bigger and encourage exploration to look for ammo, which is more important than ever here, because, like I said, ammo's hard to come by. Yeah. And then, also, like, one of the one of my the kind of neat aspects of the game is the, uh, the weapon upgrading. Like, you only have three guns in the game, but you can upgrade them using resin that you find all over the place. And, like, it's, like, really all over the place. Like, you're opening drawers... You're kind of like turning over buckets. There might be resin in there. You're looking up in the rafters. So. I mean, and that's that's I I like that from what I've yeah, played so cool. far. I think that's really cool. Like just like that's a good use of VR. Just making me feel like oh, I'm actually like looking at stuff in games that I would never pay attention to before because I know it's not I'm not going to be able to interact with it in any meaningful way. But here it is. It's very meaningful. I I, I like that. Mm-hmm. And then the, the gravity gloves are are certainly cool. And this is kind of like the like. It's they're your hands in the game. It's kind of like the gravity gun in that you can pull objects to you. Unlike the gravity gun, it has no real offensive capabilities whatsoever. It's like ninety five percent for picking up the ammo and the uh, the resin that you see. Yeah, it's UX. Then, like, it's just user experience. It's just making sure that like right. people don't have to like zoom over, go pick up the thing. But yeah, like it's just you yeah. can just zoom it right over to you. And right, you don't have to like bend over all the time or yeah. whatnot. So yeah, and I mean it's a it's a pretty good solution for that, and it, it is fun, right? Like mm-hmm. you're whipping things at you, then you're reaching up and you're grabbing it. Like, again, like all of that stuff feels very good. Maybe like you know better than in in any other VR game. But there are still like like other VR problems, like especially because it's so immersive. Otherwise, like I was talking about the locomotion. It's also this like weird stickiness sometimes. The thing where like your hands are automatically kind of grabbing onto things yeah. in a way that's kind of awkward sometimes. Especially just when opening doors, I'm like always having this problem where like I'm done with the door 
and my hand just won't let go and I'll like try to like push like the kind of grip button again and it won't really let go anyway or I'm try to like just completely open up my hands or, or something like that so just you know whenever like a weird thing like that happens it can get kind of frustrating uh like the gunfights are like really interesting now because it's much less of like you know it it makes Half-Life 2 look much more like a Call of Duty game all of a sudden, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it, it makes it look like a gallery shooter because you're usually fighting just a few enemies. They're going to hit you super, super hard. So, it, you know, it, I get it. It's smart. It encourages you to kind of, like, hide behind cover more and, like, pick your shots. And, again, it makes everything much more intense, I guess, and kind of survival horror-ish. But uh, so overall, though, it's just it, it, you think it's a good VR game, one of the better VR games, uh a lot of the response I'm hearing from people though is like this is a next generation leap this is this is the yeah, future guess, why didn't it reach that for you I guess that's yeah that's like something that I guess I'm struggling to connect with like I don't again part of it is that these these are all tricks I have seen for right. for the most part right they're being done very well here but you know it, it's more like you know there's nothing wrong with that right like like Super Mario Galaxy 2 is a game we bring up all the time. It's not an innovative game by any means, but, like, the execution of it is just it's just so incredible. And I don't, I don't necessarily want to compare this to, to that even. But on the flip side, you have something like a Mario 64 or a Half-Life 2, which is this kind of, like, revolutionary leap in some important way that's doing something, like, brand new that we think are going to be a part of, like, the gaming lexicon in the future. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I'm not sure what people think that is here, aside from being like, a, a, a full-length AAA VR game, which, you know, that is an impressive thing, and I guess that's an important thing. But there's not, like, some new, like, gameplay hook or system necessarily right. that, that I see, I suppose. And there are, like, you know, kind of other problems, and I, I kind of want to play Half-Life 2 to see if these were problems then, but levels seem to drag. It's like, you're, you're in the same areas a lot. Like, there's this one part in the middle where you're in a, a hotel, and you're trying to get through this hotel, and I felt like I was in that same hotel for, like, the longest-ass time. Especially, like, you know, like, you, you tell yourself, okay, I'll quit when I get through this next section. And I, was, and I was just, like, in this hotel for what felt like forever. And, and, and uh, you know, the setting of the, this game is this kind of dreary place. But it means you're seeing a lot of, like, indoor dreary place. And th- those all tend to look the same. Mm-hmm. Outdoor dreary place. And those all tend to look the same. Or, like underground area and, and that kind of can all look the same and sometimes you'll be in a combine area that has like a lot more black steel or, or something so like there was like a lack of visual variety i guess like remember how refreshing it was when episode two was just in the woods all of a sudden mm-hmm. they're like oh wow look there's trees that, that's kind of nice so it, it's like it, it, part of the problem is i guess because half of two already did this visual thing it's it, it maybe feels a little tired uh, i don't know would you – it's not like this is just a uh, proof of concept though, right? This is like a, a quality video game on its own. It's not like just proving that VR games can be real games. Like that we're – this is past that, right? Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's definitely past that. It's – you know, and I think that's – it is nice that it's not just like the – here's the two-hour Half-Life experience, right? Like, no, this is like the next Half-Life game. This is a full-length Half-Life game. There's, there's no bones about that. And that, again, that is, like, super cool. And that is impressive. And it is, again, like, I feel like I'm, like, trying to, I, I feel like I'm in this position now where I have to tell people why this game is not good. When I don't believe that. I yeah. believe it's good. <laughs> it's very good. It's super, it, it's, it's super fun. I'm just, I, you know, I'm not quite on, like, that next level where I'm, like, blown away by it. You know, like, you know, listen to me two weeks ago when I was talking about Ori and you can hear what I sound like when I absolutely love a game. Mm-hmm. I just did it with that, this one, and, you know, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, I mean, that point of view is valid. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think it's really weird that people... I mean, we could talk about this. Like, the world is, is kind of messed up right now. We're, we're, you know, we're, we are socially distancing ourselves. Uh, and, 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 you know, this game, we're quarantining ourselves. And this game deals with quarantines. I remember, like, uh, when I, I played up to the point where you open this big thing and you have to go inside, like, this diseased area that has, like, fungus growing everywhere. And I'm just like, man, I don't, I don't want to go in there. I don't want to do Right. It. I mean, it's, it's all quarantines and curfews and, you know, uh, end of the world type of shit right uh, in there. And, you know, it's that combined with just, again, how much more survival horror this is and how much more stressful it is in general, even just, like, literally how much more, like, body stress there is because it is a VR game where you, like, are walking around. And, it, like, it's super cool. Like, I was in a gunfight where, like, 
in order to be undercover of this like barrier, I had to literally get on my knees. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that's neat. But it was also like, I was like, you know, out, I took the headset off. I was like, I need to go get a drink mm -hmm. right now or something. Jeez. And again, that's awesome, right? That's super cool. Yeah. But also like, maybe I just want to go fishing in Animal Crossing right now instead. I don't know. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you know, let's talk about that. Like, there's two aspects here. Like, uh, that is valuable for other people who are feeling the same way you are right now. I I'm feeling that way. I played the game and I totally get it. And it's the same reason I'm having trouble. I'm I'm uh, with the Resident Evil Three demo. Uh, it's like, oh man, this game is like. It, it starts with like stuff about the CDC and and you know a virus coming to get you. But then like the main villain, like the nemesis or whatever, is just like this metaphor for this horrible creation uh, 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 that just wants to kill and destroy everything in its path. And it's like. I don't want to deal with like the metaphor for the virus either. <laughs> like that is like, it's just too much for me right now. I'm ha I'm struggling with it. Um, and you coming out and saying that helps like me, like realize like, okay, maybe this game isn't for me right now. Okay. So we've established that. Then the other aspect is th this, the, the, even, the, even if it is like you were viewing it from this point in time and from this perspective, it's not like, the game would have been a 95 for you at any other time, right? No, no, exactly. I mean, like, it's like, I don't know, maybe I should have, like, cause I guess I should say that people have been coming at me uh, on Twitter and my email. Cause and because the, like, the 80 you gave oh. it is the lowest score on, like, Metacritic and Metacritic, open credit. Right. right, so, you know, some people are just going to go on Metacritic, see who the lowest score is, and, like, find that person's email address and yell at them, even when the lowest score is an 80. Right, like, still a, a, a really good score, uh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, and, you know, the, the common thing is, like, they're, they're mad at me for docking points because of, of COVID. And, right. like, I'm not, it's like, I'm, I'm not, in my mind, I'm not docking points. It's not like I had, like, the points figured out. I'm like, now, how many points do I add or subtract because of COVID right, right. now, right? Like, you know, this is how I feel about the game. It, would, it, would it have been a higher score if was there COVID? I don't know. I don't think so. To be honest, like, I... I was I was talk I was trying to talk myself into a lower score if I was gonna be honest I wasn't at no point was I talking myself into something higher because the other complaint people have about reviews all the time is like oh people just use the eighty to one hundred review scale and when I settled on eighty I was like this is a real wishy washy score this is kind of dumb I, is, is this an eighty and I eventually was like no it's it's an eighty I, I don't want to go lower than that but again like I was maybe talking myself into lower and got you know maybe there wouldn't have been an Earth today if I did that. It's 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 telling though because people um they say the like the the objectivity word or whatever and like oh you know be objective but it's like it would be insane to me for you to be like feeling this way about the world and about the game and then not to mention that in the review not to be honest about like where you're coming from that would be way worse like we can only deal with the cards we're dealt this is what we're dealing with right now and if it's affecting you it's affecting you uh. And, and and then and then I you know I it doesn't seem like the way you've described it it just seems like an eighty like it's either you're the, what you've talked about now sounds right. like an eighty out of a hundred like I, I mean I think yeah I think if if I had just deleted all the COVID stuff from my review and left everything else up I don't think anybody would have been like oh it sounded like you wanted to give that game a ninety actually right. yeah like, so I'm just, yeah I'm just not that psyched about you know I'm just not that into you yeah uh, and and it's yeah. like you know but I'll hang out with you because you're still an eighty out of a hundred that's fine like you're not. Yeah. Like, you don't, like, regret the time you spent with it. Like, you didn't. No. Yeah. But, I mean, like, there were times where I'm like, I would rather not be playing this right now. Yes. But I, I guess I'm going to. And that's kind of, you know, that's a sign to me that a game is not a 90. When a game is, in a, is a 90, I'm probably not, like, I'm playing it just about every possible chance I can get. Mm -hmm. Or just when I was like, I guess I better play that now because that deadline's coming up, huh? Yeah. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna keep playing it if yeah, I can. Yeah, I'm curious to hear, like, you know what you what you think yeah it's i mean it, it's it, you know it still has all the the, the issues right like yeah i got i got i got this room cleaned up i got it i got it reconnected i got the the display port uh i pulled out my third monitor so i could plug in the display port for the for the index um i had to pull out a usb cord that thankfully i wasn't using to get a usb 3.2 slot for it um you know, I got it plugged into the wall. I did all that work. I got it set up. And by the time I got done with that or like over the weekend, I'm like, I don't, I don't have time. I don't have the energy to play right now. So now I've played a little bit and it's, it's sitting right behind me now, but then it's like, I still have to like 
get over the hump of like putting the headset on, making sure it is. It is a big. It's. A I will say about about the Valve Index. Like once I got everything set yeah, up, I it is the easiest barrier of like, all right, time to like click this one button on Steam and like put the headset on. Yeah, I was gonna ask you how you felt about the Index. It's it's a it's yeah, a good it's headset, nice. right? Yeah, it is a I very mean, good boy, that certainly that, the best I've used. That's. I mean, the wire is, so is like, right? The wire is a bit yeah. of a bummer. It's not a huge huge problem. But I, I'll I'll deal with the wire for. That really hot, like that really high resolution screen and the um the high mm-hmm. refresh rate, the 120 frames per second. Oh yeah, really. it was very smooth. Yeah, I you know I guess like the last thing I want to say about like the review and stuff is and, you know some people think that I'm trying to criticize Valve for like making or releasing this game during this time and you know of course I'm not doing that. Like I understand that the timing is not their fault, but I'm I'm not Valve's teacher here. I'm not like giving them grade for right. a homework assignment, you know? This feedback just, isn't for them. Right, and yeah, and I mean, you know, video games are a product of the, the times that they're released in, and this is, and my job, I think, is to talk about what I think about a game, how it makes me feel, and, you know, and if I think it's good, and, you know, all these other things. It's not just, you know, a, a product summary, you know, for 4.5 out of 5 for fun factor and so on. I joke that we should have a, a COVID factor now for all of our reviews. <laughs> Yeah, or, the, I, the COVID swerve, yeah. Yeah, like like six months from now, when everything's all settled down, I'm going to review this game again and be like, all right, now there's not COVID. I guess I'll give it a fair shake, and <laughs> I'll just like, give it a 70 and see if people really freak out. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh, I think we can move on to uh, – I mean, <laughs> you mentioned a game that you can't stop playing. That's still me with Animal Crossing New Horizons. But I've been, I've been into it. You've been playing it, and you have bounced off the games in the past. They just aren't – they weren't for you. You've been playing this one, though. What, what, oh, what's, yeah. You know? It's like I thought that the Nook Miles and just having the, like, the progression feels a lot better. Like, you have a lot right. of, like, macro and micro goals at almost all times. Uh, and so, you know, I'm seeing a lot of progress constantly. You know, it, it's like the same reason why I kind of like like RPGs, right? The grinding. Right. It's just very satisfying. And the game is also just very calming and very cute. And there's just a lot of things to do. Like, I had a lot of fun last night just making this GameCube uh pixel graphic thing and then i like yeah you showed that to me it was very good oh, i was very proud of myself and then i i, I got all the gamecube color or like alternates and made those versions of it did you make that in the game look. using the editor in the game mm-hmm. what else would i have done so there's like websites where you can build stuff on the website or like import jpegs yeah. and then they'll give you a qr code and you can import using the qr code i haven't no, done i didn't cheat but like, yeah that's like that's how you see like there's people that have like posters from like like that, like look real life. That's how they're doing them. So that's I see. Yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah, but no, this was this was all in game, baby. Yeah. So uh, it's just it, I don't know. It's just been a great game to go back to all the time. Uh, that busy work is actually real. You're right. The grind. Yeah, right. I'll really tell you what I really like is the way the museum looks in this game. Like the museum, yes, what I recall in the last game, did not look nearly this good, right? No, it was much more like just presenting the stuff in a very bare bones way. I mean, they right. there were some cute features, but this thing is like, it's like I would actually die to go to this museum. Yeah, this right. is, it's right. really well done. Especially somebody has like this odd affinity for like museum architecture. Mm-hmm. Like I was at the Field Museum last year. It was just like so, I just like love the way it like aside from the exhibit, it's just the way everything looks. And this like has a bit of that. I'm like, oh yes, this is good. Yeah, I also but... love like Blathers being like this bizarre masochist who like masochist who. Hates bugs, but dedicated a third of his museum to them. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I feel that energy. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, it, yeah, he he promises he, he you know he's ethical. He'll, he'll, he'll take, take care he of those does, bugs. He looks like they have a good home. Um, but like now that like I've upgraded my house twice, so like now I'm like starting to like get serious about like the and I I got the store open finally, so I'm like gonna get more serious about right. like the decorating my home phase, which I think I kind of want to go for a like a kishi like t- tiki vibe mm-hmm. i mean and the, you know you'll get like you so the i can't remember so you paid it off twice do you have the second room or is it just like a big room just one big room okay. still right so, you, so you'll get other rooms eventually tomorrow, and stuff yeah yeah by tomorrow i can probably uh so i i, and I think i'm at the point now where i'm basically just using nook miles to buy the the tickets to go to those other islands so i can get resources and yeah that's i mean it's a great way to like uh, to like especially if like you get, get a really good uh hot item in the store where they're going to pay twice as much for right. uh if if you need that those resources to make that thing and they're paying a ton, it, it's totally worth it. Like I, honestly, I got um today they're buying the hearth, which is five thousand bells normally, so they're paying ten thousand bells for that. But you need bamboo, and I only have a limited number of bamboo on my island, so I'm like trying to find another bamboo island. So I'm buying these tickets one after the other, trying to go get that because it's totally worth it. It's been like yeah. a ton of cash, and it's like 
My first day, they were buying the 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 tire seat. I'm like, this thing normally sells for like twenty bells. They yeah. gave me forty. It was great. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, yeah. So like on those days, it's like, ah, oh, this just isn't worth it. But it's like some days it is, and then like, but on the days where it's not not worth it, there's a million other things you you could be doing to make to make bells or just like. Like you, I mean, just messing around with the editor. Like you could just be doing stuff just to decorate stuff on your own, uh, and not even partaking in like the necessary like treadmill. Um, it, it's like I remember. I, I think I was listening to your brother on the Exploding Barrel podcast, and he's like, I, you know, you get things and they don't do anything, and it's like, why? And I'm like, I I got that too. Like that, I always kind of felt that way about Animal Crossing as well. Even though I liked the games, I remember the first GameCube Animal Crossing. It's like. Uh, other than the Nintendo uh, 64 or whatever that you got that could like play or with the NES, you get NES games uh, and that could actually play NES games on a TV in the game in the GameCube version. It was really cool. Uh, but other than that, all the other things were just for decoration and like you're just like playing house. Um, I, and I don't like for me, like it's somehow in this game, it's like I think they've just done a better job of showing you like. Like decorating your island, decorating your house is the reward itself. I, 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 yeah, I'm not sure like, how they've they done a better job. Like, it, you know, maybe it's a sad thing that they had to kind of gamify it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit. To get it for 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 schlubs like me to get it, but it works. Like, it works. I, I get it much more. Yeah. Um, I and, and like you know, I've played I played since the end of February because uh, I reviewed it. Uh, so I'm like on the third week or something like that, and there's like still stuff I'm looking forward to. Uh, and that's not like just like oh events like easter like they're gonna have a big easter event yeah absolutely i'm looking forward to that but uh there's like tiers to the shop and i i'm pretty sure like i'm still on the same tier like you just opened nook at cranny i'm still on that shop and i'm pretty sure in like a, a week or two uh and this is just from what i've heard they haven't like hinted at this in the game yet but in a week or two that shop's gonna uh, expand and they, they did this in new leaf where like eventually yeah, i was wondering what's gonna expand because it's like i go in there and there's like two furniture items i'm like hmm right and it's like you know so for that, like, you know, you just buy everything every day and, like, that you build out your catalog and sell stuff you don't need and then buy it again from the catalog. It's, like, a, a good trick I learned in New Leaf. Uh, but it's, like, man, I, you know, I'm, you know, the shop's going to get bigger and that's going to be a thing. And now I'm, like, now that I have all the buildings mostly, I'm, like, thinking about how I want to lay out my town. And I've um, started paying the, the, the huge fee of, like, 50,000 bells to move my shop from one place over to the road that I made so they could be on the road next to the uh, next to the clothing shop and stuff like that. So it's, like... I'm like, oh, there's just so much more I could do. It's like, oh yeah, I've sort of gone, I've div I saw credits, like I rolled credits on the game, like that happens, and then I'm like, you know, okay, so you know, am I gonna just kind of get on like the same old, same old treadmill now? Is it gonna kind of get a, a is, is it gonna fizzle out? And it's just like, no, there's so much more that I just I can look forward to what, that I am really digging what, into. What's really the condition doing. where credits roll? Is it completing your house? Uh, no, uh, uh, it's uh, forgetting KK Slider to come play a concert. So oh. that, that's like the final mission uh, of Interesting. the final, like on this guided part of the early game over the first two weeks. Um, once you get through and like you, you'll, you'll build some houses for people. This was the special guest you couldn't talk about. Last yeah, exactly. Week. The special guest I couldn't talk about. Yeah. So yeah, you, you, you build some houses for people. They'll come and move in and then. I'm uh, doing that part now. Yeah. Yes. And then uh, Tom Nook will start talking about like making the island more appealing. So uh, KK Slider will want to come. Uh, people like KK Slider will want to want to come visit the island. Then you start talking to Isabel about like island evaluations and she'll be like, oh, you know, right now it's one out of five. Keep putting stuff out. Uh, keep inviting more people. Keep building up the infrastructure with bridges and stuff. Uh, and then I was like, um, this seems like it's going to take a long time. And then like right before the review was going to go up, I was like, uh, I went to go check with her again and I had been putting stuff out. And it's like three out of five. Here's a review from someone with the initials KS. It's a really cool place. I wish I could come visit. And Tom looks like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so, yeah. Uh, and then. Once he comes to play the concert, it's like credits are rolling. He's playing the song, and it's it's a really right. it's a really well done moment. Um, oh man, I'm pumped. Yeah, and then but it's like then you know it's it's not over. I feel like the game's still just kind of opening up more and more every every time I'm playing. I'm really like, and a lot of that's just like um, the, the grinds that I think each person gets into are going to be very specific early on. But then you like you'll see someone do something on Twitter, like people are um, setting up traps to catch tarantulas when they go to the tarantula island, which <laughs> yeah. I still have never been to. But it's like, oh man, like that. I'm 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 gonna start trying to go to islands more often so I can get some of these rare islands. Uh, you can find the grind that's right for you for whatever moment you're in, and that's where this game is really just like hitting its stride for me. And I'm like, yeah, I'm really glad that I gave it a super high review. I think, and I'm glad to hear it. Sounds like I'm mostly right in saying that people who bounced off the series in the past are enjoying it. It sounds like that's the case for you. Yes, uh, yeah, this, is this is definitely the most I've liked in Animal Crossing game yeah. pretty easily. 
I can say <sighs> that. Without yeah. Uh, any any other thoughts on this, or should we uh, move on? I think I might have like like a couple other games I could talk about real quickly. No, I'm just I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm gonna be playing more. I mean, I've even kind of taken a break from Dragon Quest, so I can devote a lot more time to this. To be honest. Yeah, and, I, and like I think once you um once you get through that two week period, that first early yeah. two week period. Like, you can play in much more bite-sized chunks, I think, and still get stuff done. And then if you still want to play, like, in long chunks, uh, you, you, you can. It's not like you run out of stuff to do ever. Yeah, I feel uh, like I'm going to, at some point, like, once my house is all basically built and I have a lot of the town, I was like, like it, I'm, I'm probably going to, like, be, like, logging on and just, like, worried about doing some fishing or filling yeah. out the museum. Like, I'm really excited about filling out the museum now because too. I like that museum. Yes, I mean, it, the, my, my favorite part is the uh, the fossil area with all the... um branching paths of like the tree yeah. of life and then it ends with like all the the silhouettes of the villagers of the and different like villagers oh. yeah yeah and then you can go yeah. stand under it and the spotlight comes down it's like it's yeah. a lot of really clever touches there and then there's like the, the water tank you kind of like get behind the water yeah tank. the Ooh. aquarium it is, is really great too yeah um so, uh, have yeah. you been playing doom because i haven't i think maybe tonight yeah. i'll get to although i have a raid tonight so i don't know but i, yeah. I want to play doom how have you started that yet? i started it um and i uh I'm liking it. I, I I could tell that the systems are going to be really deep, and people have been calling it a hard game. And I th- I think they're right. It seems like it's like you have to get right into it. And I think the reason it's hard, I I think, is because it's still you have to be so much more aggressive in Doom than any other shooter. And then yeah, think, and it's it's just like so different from like I remember just like getting used to, to that in the first Doom. Yeah, and, I, and then I think this one even amps it up even more. Uh, and then on top of that, there's system complexity where like you are juggling more than ever. Um, and then it's like you know the the big bosses or like the big enemies have weak points and you have to like be in, like mindful of that and like have good aim. So yeah, like you're really gonna you're gonna have to get good for this one, I think. Um, but I, I, I'm my concern actually about this game is I think it might not be as clever as I was hoping in terms of the writing and the presentation of like of the of the Doom guy character and stuff like that. I, I haven't played enough. I'll have to keep going. But just like. The attitude it had right off the bat in 2016, where like he just you know wakes up from the, uh, from the the ritual or whatever, and immediately just starts like punching doors and getting people out of his way and and, and breaking stuff and interrupting and interrupting people. They have some of that in this. It's not landing as well. I think part of it's just like I, I think they. It seems like maybe not everyone on board of making these games understood fully understood like what made the Doom 2016 Doom guy work so well, but. I'll keep playing. I'll report back. Um, I know that even if uh, even if that part doesn't work, it seems like the underlying core gameplay is is really good. And once I kind of get my my sea legs, I'll be really enjoying that. So, looking forward to doing more of that. Um, I, I also started Ori and the Will of the Wisps, uh, and yeah. it's like uh, as soon as I start it, my kids like are like, "Oh yeah, this game's really cool," and then they like come up to me and start like jumping all over me because I think they like want to try to play the game themselves and they're still way <laughs> too young for that and it's like yes. so I'm, I'm i think i'm going to find some like separate time away from them to actually play it because it's it's been difficult but man that game looks good and oh, it that's feels a good so game. good uh just oh, moving, yeah. moving them around is just so good so uh i'll, I'll that's the game i'm actually gonna probably focus on this week um because uh, i, I want to get through it because i don't want to put it off yes, uh, yes good. other than that though uh not much else how about for you anything no, no, no. Just, just those two. And I had, I've had some friends wanting to play World of Warcraft Classic during the COVID thing because they're, you know, wanted to do something to hang out, so I make right. a new character with them. And one of them has like no experience of doing a lot of uh, teaching. I almost said babysitting. That sounded mean. A lot of teaching. <laughs> well, I mean, how's it going? Are you? Is, are they getting the hang of it? I think so. I don't think they're quite ready to uh, like do anything alone. But you know, maybe maybe they'll get there. What's it like for a new a uh, new, new player? Will they get like ragged on by other players, or is it pretty? No, well not really. Because I mean, you're not you're not really impacting other players, right? Okay. For very like, unless you like somehow go out of your way to try to do a dungeon, which as a new player you're probably not going to do mm-hmm. anyway. So I guess it's it's new player friendly in that way. Like no one's going to yell at you. It's not like trying to become a new player in Overwatch or something where right. you're just going to be bad while wow and your team's going to be very mad at you and right. say mean things. Uh, that's most games. All right, all right let's, uh, let's get out of here then, Mike. Why don't you tell everybody yes. where they can find you? 
You can find me on Twitter if you need to yell at me about Half Life at Tolkoto, T O L K O T O. You also did an interview about that game. I uh, did do an interview with Valve, uh, which is pretty good. So people should check that out as well. Do, yeah. Read that first, and then if you read that, then you've earned the right to yell at Mike. Yeah, that's then right. you can. All then right? I'll get my requisite page views. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I'm Jeff Grubb on Twitter and on Twitch. And then Jeffrey Grubb on YouTube. Uh, I, I posted a Animal Crossing review on YouTube. If you would rather watch that than, um, than uh, read it. And, yeah, it's uh, it, it came out really nice. People were really kind. I got a lot of nice comments on YouTube of all places. Must Mike, be nice. So I don't Must know. Must be nice. I don't know. I'm just saying maybe it's you. I don't know. <laughs> got to examine things here. All right, everybody. We're going to get out of here. Have a good one. Uh, until next week, Have you know, I don't know. Just be, be good. Stay home uh, and take care of yourself. And then die for the economy. Week. Yeah, yeah. Die for the economy is what I meant to say. That's right. That's our new tagline. Uh, our <laughs> new outro. Right. Die for the economy, everybody. Goodbye. Bye.